Hello everybody, welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. Please leave your bias at the door and join us for another transfer update. I think it's number six. Now we do these each and every transfer window, looking at each and every player coming into the championship and some players going out of the championship, especially when they're big deals. We look at them and there is one of those for us to talk about today. Um, as ever, we're looking at done deals. I need to see a club website announcement, player holding shirt, player holding scarf, boring interview saying I can't wait to get going. I'm raring to get started and all of that stuff. And then we will have a talk about it and get your thoughts down there in the comments. No rumours as such. And we are going to um, break our normal rule of not doing outgoings because there is a big one to start with here. Michael Elise, 19 years old, has left Reading. Um, undisclosed fee. Transfer marked, have it down as £8.37 million. Pounds. As ever, I don't really want to get into transfer fees. Um, my email is available below. So if you want to send me a picture of the deal memorandum with the fee written on it, if you work for Reading or Crystal Palace, then feel free to. But I'll leave it as saying it's a big fee. And... I don't know who in the Reading squad, apart from maybe Swift, would raise a bigger fee. Um, he is the saleable asset, 19 years old. And uh, Crystal Palace, from their point of view, obviously had a very successful pick in a creative payer out of the championship in Eze last season. I know they paid pretty much double for Eze. Um, and they've gone back to the same well here, now managed by Patrick Vieira uh, Palace. They've gone for Elise, who um, last season was his real breakthrough season, but we did see him sneaking in at the end of the previous um, season, and uh, we knew he was going to be a big star. I think he kind of got overly fast-tracked because of injuries. Maite didn't start all that many games, and Swift was out for a hell of a long time, wasn't he, for Reading. So Elise, um, he's really good. He, he really is. He... Basically, in a 4-2-3-1, we've seen him play all of the three positions off the front. Uh, he can carry the ball, drift in with the ball and um, play key passes whilst moving. And um, as much as it's basic, it's um, a long-held opinion of mine that um, in the championship, if you can stop on the ball and make a key pass and be a creative player consistently, you'll be one of the better players. If you can do it whilst on the move at any kind of pace you will invariably end up in the Premier League where most players um, seem to be able to do this. And Elise can do that at a very, very young age. I think I do remember a couple of times him actually being in one of those central midfield positions. Obviously, in the Premier League, look, if Roy Hodgson was still the manager, we'd say he'd, be, he'd get nowhere near central midfield and he'd be used uh, further forward as a creative force. I don't know um, Vieira's style of management, but... Good luck to him. Young player gets the move. There is an argument. Could they have sold him and loaned him back for a year? Because he is so young, at least. Who knows? Um, I'm sure that will get figured out as we go. In terms of Reading and what it does for them, it's money coming in. But we know um, with Reading that it's always fairly close on the FFP, isn't it? So hopefully it's money they can use. But we really knew that they did need to raise something and uh, they've now lost Omar Richards. Um, that's a really annoying one for Reading because they didn't get any money for him. He's gone off to Bayern Munich and Michael Elise. So from a Reading point of view, A, you hope they're in a position where they can use the money and um, B, it was probably a necessary sale. Does it mean nobody else goes out now, there's good players at Reading. Lucas Zhao, obviously, um, for the most part last season, was very good up top. Maite, I think, is very good. Um, but they just couldn't get him on the pitch um, for, you know, 35, 40 games last season, which would have made a difference. Laurent and Rinomota are good in the centre of midfield. Swift is obviously good. And, um, you know, if, um, if Swift stays fit, then... That hole is filled, but obviously you do miss a quality young player like Michael Elise. So uh, good luck to him. 
let me know how you think he'll do in the Premier League in the comments and uh, what it means for Reading and can they use some of that money or are the finances going to be too tight in which case there'd have to be another player going out or is that is that that for uh, Reading and they can um, now try and uh, not necessarily rebuild but retool a little bit and hopefully um, free up a bit to uh, bring in somebody else obviously very, very hard to get a 19-year-old who's going to play that many games and be that creative and that much of an influence. So it is what it is. It's the championship, the best players. You know they're off in the end, don't you? They don't hang around forever. Right, let's look at the incomings now. This is Liam Walsh in at Swansea. Free transfer, more thrifty, clever business um, from Swansea who... Continually pull rabbits out of hats, I always say, in terms of their incomings. Lots of big sales from Swansea over the last few years and not too many big incomings. Uh, Three-year deal, 23 years old, joins Carl Joseph and Joel Pirro. I say that, they dropped a fair enough fee on uh, Joel Pirro. Uh, but I'm going to be tightening the belt a little bit, Swansea, this season. Um, someone did point out Andre Ayew, um was going to free up some salary. Uh, fine, he will. But remember the 15 million quid, the third parachute payment. They're not getting that this season. And Andre was on a, a good whack. He wasn't on 15 million quid a season. So it might still be a net loss and, um, you know, a bit more austerity at Swansea. But Steve Cooper's a clever operator. He'd been at Bristol City, hadn't he? Uh, Welsh had a good loan over at Coventry in their promotion season in League One and just couldn't get on the pitch last season. And um, I don't know what the deal is, whether he didn't want to re-sign at Bristol City or Nigel Pearson didn't didn't fancy him. Um, you would think, Beans, he's gone up to a team that lost in the playoff final, that Bristol City might have wanted to keep him. Who knows? Did I just see Everton under 18 and Premier League? I always just assume now that Steve Cooper knows every player who was in the system when he was doing the England representative teams. And I don't know whether Liam Walsh is of that age. He possibly is, isn't he? Or whether he's known to. He knows everybody, Cooper, doesn't he? So Fulton, Grimes in central midfield, strong there, can add Walsh into that mix. We'll see um, what system and strategy and ayu less and uh, hurrahan less Swansea play now. So maybe it's uh, the three-man midfield and he fills the... Hurrahan spot. I don't know. Um, we will find out next season. But it's a freebie. And given they keep doing this um, and um, sort of investing well and then <laughs> selling high, uh, you would assume it's a sensible one. Let's see how he's utilised and how often they can get Liam Walsh on the pitch. Let me know if you're a Bristol City fan as well, whether if you're disappointed to see him go. And there seems to have been a fair corridor across um, from Bristol City to Swansea. Um, who went last season? Uh, who was it on loan? Casey Palmer. Is there a couple gone in between? I'm trying to think. Uh, feels like there's a couple gone in between anyway, um, even if they're not uh, flying into my brain at the moment, those names. Let me know what you think of that one. Liam Walsh in to Swansea. And here is, give me a fun one to pronounce, Tahith Chong, who is a left winger from what my research Tells me he's gone into Birmingham uh, from Manchester United. He's 21, has had a couple of loans, Bruges and Bremen, obviously over in Europe. Um, and um, he fills the, how do I describe it without insulting um, young players at Premier League teams? You often think when they get to 21 and they've already gone on loan here, gone on loan here, and they're not getting too close to the first team. Um, one of those players who may be gettable, um, who may be a good championship player, we don't know. We would assume, maybe wrongly, and someone will probably give me an example of someone who in the end breaks through age 22 or 23, maybe Tammy Abraham would be the one, but he certainly had a go in Premier League loans at Swansea and then came back down to Villa and then uh, back up. What I'm saying is the best case scenario here for Birmingham is that 
he's not going to make it at Manchester United and they can get him in the club, get him on a loan and perhaps in the end you get a good pick up that way. Obviously, Chong will hope that he does really well for Birmingham. I mean, he can do it at Manchester United, but often it's not a linear path, is it? Um, so we'll see uh, how this fella um, pans out. A dynamic forward who operates from the wing with his blistering pace. I mean, that's um, club website words, but all um, all looks good. Uh, impressed in the UEFA Youth League and was named Manchester United's Jimmy Murphy, Young Player of the Year in 2018. So that is three years back. Not sure what strategy Lee Bowyer's going to use. It was very much simplicity to get them out of trouble. Uh, so whether that's um, left wing and a 4-2-3-1, a 4-3-3. Um, Bowyer isn't averse to the old narrow midfield, the 4-4-2 diamond. We've seen him play with Charlton before. In which case, there's the 10 position as well. Although, from the heat maps I looked at, he looks very much like a left winger type player. So, um, interesting. Yeah, and I don't know too much about the player. Um, if you're a Manchester United fan, uh, let me know. He's obviously been in the system a while um, and not got too near the first team. I think he got on the pitch three times in the Premier League last season, if I'm uh, not misremembering that as a substitute. So... Could work out well for Birmingham, could work out well for the player, but it's very, very difficult to tell. Many players get loaned down. Some do well, some don't. Good luck to uh, Tahith Chong. And here comes another one. Um, and this could be Birmingham's entire left-hand side, these two. This is Juan Castillo, uh, 21 years old, from Chelsea. And immediately, we know the score. Chelsea absolutely stockpile players loan them out and it's just part of a business model for Chelsea isn't it if one or two are Mason Mount, Rhys James, Tammy Abraham etc then great because then you have your elite Champions League winning 50 to 100 million quid England international there don't you or whatever country they they uh, do end up playing for but um, you do get the odd one that slips the net obviously Kevin De Bruyne I don't think exactly come come through there but uh, sometimes there's a there's a lot of um, moving parts and people in the way at Chelsea. So uh, Castillo, 21 years old, left back. Um, he is Dutch, isn't he? Yeah, he's on a season-long loan. And uh, Alkmaar, uh, Young Ajax, which I guess is their under-23s, and Den Haag, he has played for. A couple of players I just mentioned there are Mount and James a teammate of them. Look, Chelsea have dropped some really good players into the championship, regardless of Mount at Derby or Tamori at Derby. Uh, James, obviously, at Wigan. They're the big ones. Then Abraham at, at Villa. But uh, Mark Gway, as well, has been really good for uh, Swansea. So there's definitely a market there. And you just hope, if you're a Birmingham fan, you're getting the uh, latest one of those guys who's going to be... Absolutely superb for you for a season. Again, I'll reiterate my point about, you know, these guys when they do reach 21, 22. Are they going to become Matthew Pennington or Cameron Carter-Vickers and never make it in the Premier League club? Or is there still a chance that you do get your Tamori Mount, um, etc, etc? So, and that could be the left-hand side, couldn't it? Um, I think, did Seddon go out from Birmingham? I think possibly he did. So left back, wing back, um, whatever system Lee Bowyer operates if you're bringing in a 21-year-old from Chelsea, uh, perhaps he goes uh, in to the side. I'm trying to think who would have been in those positions. George Friend is obviously there as well, but he was used quite a lot as a centre-back. So um, yeah, let me know how many appearances between those two, Chong and Castillo at uh, Birmingham. We will find out. And in beautiful um, uh, lineup here, look, here's a left wing back who played a hell of a lot at St Andrews last season for Coventry. Uh, this is Sam McCallum, who joins QPR on loan. Still only 20, actually, McCallum. He seems to be um, seems to have been there for ages. So McCallum was picked up, I think, for a big fee from Norwich. I think two to three million quid was spent on him when he was. Uh, it was a couple of seasons ago, so he would have been 18, 19 
um, at that point. He was at that point in League One in the promotion season for Coventry. We mentioned Liam Walsh. Um, it's all lining up and it? very incestuous, this championship stuff. Norwich took him, loaned him straight back. And then um, Norwich um, didn't, didn't want to use him in the championship, loaned him again to Coventry and he played a ton of games. What did it say? 40, 41 championship appearances, pretty much exclusively as a wing back. Coventry played the same system all season. And if you're a QPR fan, you'll know that QPR switched to that wing back system, uh, didn't they? Halfway through last season. And a lot of people have been pointing out to me that if QPR were to stay out their numbers in the second half of last season, they will be a challenger next season. Who knows? And a couple of interesting deals gone in there as well. This is one of them. Um, I think Wallace, Hammerline and used down that side. So I think McCallum will start for QPR and he'll be in that wing-back position. It looks um, looks like a good pickup, doesn't it? And um, not to upset any Coventry fans, but the facts tell you that QPR finished higher than Coventry. So um, from McCallum or Norwich's point of view, it, he feels like he's stepping up into what, if QPR can uh, replicate the second half of last season, would be potentially a top half championship team. Coventry did great, especially at the end of last season, but were operating slightly lower down. So Looks like a good one to me. And um, QPR, I know we've finished with the Euros now and the term dark horses or uh, one to watch or whatever. Obviously, the parachute teams are a nightmare to get past, aren't they? But it uh, could be interesting at, at QPR. They're a one that are moving on in their development. And if the line continues upwards, we know um, where it heads and it heads towards the playoffs, doesn't it? We'll see. And oh, it's so beautifully set up here. Here's another player who was on loan at Coventry last season. It's Victor Gjorkerez, and he signed up full-time Swedish international, 23 years old. He's come in from Brighton. And again, um, this is how, you know, we talk about Chelsea or Manchester United loaning players down. But even now, this gap between Premier League wealth and Championship wealth even Brighton, who perennially have not been in the top division, are able to loan players continually down to the championship. Obviously, Ben White was so good for Leeds, wasn't he? Matt Clark for Derby. Um, plenty of Brighton players getting loaned down. Here's another one, uh, Victor Gilcarez. But this has gone full time now. Uh, undisclosed, did it say? I think, yeah, undisclosed fee, so... Who knows what that is, um, but uh, Coventry certainly picking up their attacking roster now. Uh, Waghorn came in, didn't he? Walker, uh, Godden, maybe O'Hare, Shipley, more sort of wide options, but I don't know. They seem to be heading in the right direction, Coventry, and they've, they've got options now, and they're building things up nicely there. Gil Carez went on loan to Swansea uh, last season. Didn't work out there. I don't think he scored any league goals. And then uh, three... I think, for Coventry. But look, Mark Robbins has seen enough. Obviously, he's got good ground and he's a young player. And depending what the fee was, could be a good deal. Although, there, are, there is, um, as I said, people in the way there. Waghorn's so experienced at championship level now. And Walker, um, a younger player and a, a good start for him last season. So, um, there should be some good competition there for, for Coventry. And with the Creative players like Hammer and um, O'Hare, Godden, Shipley. Um, he's got more forward, I know. But um, it could be interesting um, at the top end for Coventry. Can they push on towards mid-table and replicate what sort of Luton and Barnsley have done coming up from League One um, in recent seasons and becoming very viable championship teams? So let me know what you think. Gjorkarez in or returning to Coventry. And here is Ryan Longman. And this just... It's such a good show today, isn't it? Everything's linking together with um, all of these players pretty much having played with each other. It's another Brighton loney. Uh, so Longman joins up with Hull. Uh, 20 years old, he can play anywhere across the front line. He was at uh, AFC Wimbledon last season. 35 starts, 8 goals. Um, and he joins up with Hull. Obviously, Grant McCann's going to have known the League One um, 
sort of picture very well because they won League One last season, didn't they? Hull. So um, can he make the step up is the, the question now. Uh, um, I, I think he's been on loan lower down, but this will be the highest level, I think, um, that uh, Ryan Longman has played at. Uh, so... Good luck to him, um, and we'll see if he can be a contributor for Hull next season. And another one on the um, Brighton to the Championship line. Uh, a couple more to go. It wouldn't be a transfer window if we didn't have Jordan Archer signing for someone in the uh, Championship. Uh, a mainstay, a first-teamer at Millwall. Eh, much maligned, can I say that, or is that too much of a cliché? Sometimes criticised at Millwall and um, they thought they needed an upgrade, uh, finishing eighth a couple of times, didn't they? And in the end, we got Bielkowski. But since then, where's he been? Oxford, Fulham, Motherwell, Borough, and now he's in at QPR. Look, he's 28 and he's obviously quite happy to fill up that sub-goalkeeper role. Every team... Needs it. He obviously interviews very well and is very likable to keep getting these moves. Does he get towards the first team? I don't know. Um, Seni Dieng was very good for QPR last season, so I probably think he doesn't. But look, every club, every team needs um, two or three keepers, don't they? And Archer seems to be filling this role and continually, I'm sure in a couple of years, we'll have him move to another championship club. So... Uh, yeah, obviously seems to be a, a good guy and a good guy to have around. But how often he's on the pitch next season, I think if Dieng doesn't get injured, I don't think it's very often at all, frankly. But there we go. Knows his onions at, at 28. And um, in goes Jordan Archer to QPR. And here is the last one. This is Emmanuel Fernandez. I think this is just dotting I's and crossing T's in at Peterborough. If you look at the quote at the bottom there from Darren Ferguson, we bought... Emmanuel Lille from Ramsgate last season. So he signed the deal now, 19 years old, former Ramsgate and Gillingham. Centre-half, Peter Bro in the main, played three at the back, didn't they? Kent, Beavers and Thompson last season. So I'd imagine he goes in as a squad player and a project. And if he trains superlatively well, he may push those guys. But um, I think that's more a squad deal. Right, that is our latest transfer update. Um... As ever, I have to always give these caveats. It is 20 past 11 on Tuesday morning. So if your transfer has not been announced at this point I'm recording on the club website of your team that you want me to talk about, I won't be talking about it because it hasn't happened yet. If, God forbid, I've missed one out, then you can tell me politely that I have um, missed one out um, as we're trying to work as a society on communicating politely on social media but in all seriousness if I have missed one out do let me know and I'll stick it in the next video and of course if um, a player I'm talking about uh, a transfer is not in this video it may have been in one of the previous videos so some of the blunt um, sometimes quite snarky comments I get can often be well all of them will be uh, solved by one of those uh, three things um, and you can get your comments in on any of those transfers. Let me know uh, what you think. Um, if you've got any insight on the players over and above what I've said, please um, please get it in and we fill the, um, fill the comments up with um, some really good stuff, hopefully. So, uh, Michael Elise to Palace. Walsh to Swansea. Chong and Castillo to Birmingham. Uh, McCallum to QPR and Archer also to QPR. Gil Carres to... Uh, Coventry and Fernandez in to Peterborough. That is our latest load of transfers. I think we might have a slight lull um, in terms of deals and then it's going to speed up probably in that week beginning Monday the 26th um, as the within two weeks before the season starts. Um, in terms of the cascade and the money coming in, well... Are Stoke going to spend any of the 12 million they got for Nathan Collins? We think 12 million, undisclosed, obviously. Um, and Reading for Michael East. I don't see that being the deal that opens up, you know, big fees going between championship clubs, if any at all. So um, we will see. I think people are still going to be being thrifty 
And we're just expecting this chain now of Kane somewhere, Ings somewhere, Armstrong somewhere, and then maybe someone like Blackburn might have some money and shot within the championship. We will find out. But what we do know is that I will be talking about all of these deals as they go through. I don't know when the window closes. Um, Monday the 6th of September. That's a guess. It'll be around there sometime. So I dare say there'll be a few more of these shows to go. Um, I've had my say. Now you have yours. Get involved in the comments. That is our latest championship transfer update. Thanks for watching. Over and out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. To see more videos from this channel, hit the subscribe button and to be notified every time we upload, ring the bell for those notifications to come through on your device. If you really want to support the channel and me as a content creator, I will be eternally grateful if you head over to the merch store and grab something or support over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Thank you for your time. Go and watch another video.